Hollywood is preparing for one of the biggest nights of the year, the Academy Awards, the Oscars. My next guest thinks the easiest way to help Hollywood regain its credibility is to give Ronald Reagan an honorary Oscar. His new book is out today. Mark Weinberg shares an intimate behind-the-scenes look inside the Reagan presidency, told through the many movies they watch together every weekend at Camp David. He shares everything from Reagan's big-screen favorites to White House run-ins with some of Hollywood's biggest names, including the deceased king of pop, Michael Jackson. Joining me now for his first interview on Fox Business, President Reagan's assistant press secretary, Mark Weinberg, is here, the author of the new book, Movie Night with the Reagans. Aw, there's the Gipper and Nancy. Uh, nice to have you here. Nice to be here. Uh, I love Ronald Reagan, and I love the 80s, and I think there's nothing more 80s than Michael Jackson visiting the White House. But it became very clear very quickly that the King of Pop was quite shy. Yes, but it was a thriller for all of the staff. Oh, come on oh, now. Oh, come on now. Yes, it was, it was one of those moments, uh, and, and I write about this in, in movie nights, that you had to be there to believe because here was this usually sedate White House staff mm -hmm. that went berserk when Michael Jackson came. I'd never seen anything like it. And it was at the height of his thriller success. Yes. In 1983, correct? Was that the year that he visited? He, okay, he, but he came when he was he was wearing the white glove and the epaulets. Yep. yep. And uh, sunglasses. He had it all. But he, he locked himself in a bathroom. He did. He got he got frightened by the crowd. He got frightened by the crowd. And, and uh, I, listen, I have to confess something. I was no better than anybody else, and I write in movie nights that I wanted a picture with him, too. And someone said, well, you know, he's never been to the White House before. I said, aha, I'm going to go downstairs and get some guidebooks. Mm -hmm. I got some guidebooks. I grabbed a photographer, and I got a picture of myself with the gloved one. Oh, that's nice. And was he sweet? He was so quiet. Mm -hmm. He was so quiet. And, and the president remarked about that in his diary. He did. He did. And the president had a habit, as I say in this book, of remarking in his diary about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. One of the things that Reagan did at the end of the day was go home to the White House and write down his impressions of people. And there are a lot of those in this book that haven't been read before yeah. of what he really thought of some really interesting people. And give me one of those impressions. Some, what's something surprising that when you reread the president's diary, it, uh, it surprised even you? He wrote in there about Hellcats of the Navy mm -hmm. starring RR and NDR. It was fun. And I thought to myself, you know, he made this movie with his wife, mm -hmm. and to this day, he says, it was fun to still watch it. We watched it at Camp David, along with many other movies. And, and you said that Camp David was so instrumental in his healing after the assassination attempt. And, and that's yes. where uh, you bonded with the Reagans, as you would spend so much time I did. watching and movies there. That's why I wanted to write this book, because this is the one side of the Reagans that's never been seen before. There have been a lot of books. But no one's ever written about being at Camp David with them weekend after weekend and watching movie after movies, 80s movies, mm -hmm. golden oldies movies, some of their movies. And it's a picture of them and a piece of their life that Mrs. Reagan knew I was writing about, yeah. was very excited about. I had, I think, the last interview with her before she died, yeah. and she told me how she felt about movies. Okay, so let me ask you this, because... Uh, Nancy Reagan was obviously very instrumental in her husband's presidency. She was yes. very protective of him. Yes. Uh, she was much more involved in policy than I think a lot of people realize. And I, I think there are comparisons to be made between her and Hillary Clinton. If it were a different time and say 20 years later, do you think Mrs. Reagan could have run for president and could she have won? I don't know. They were different people. I'm not sure they're valid comparisons. Uh, she let, as it says in the book, you know, that's Ronnie's area. That's mm -hmm. for the West Wing. That's not for me. But she did have a great she interest. She had opinions, yeah. and she shared them with them privately. At Camp David, sometimes they would whisper to each other, and she let him know what, what he thought, but she never sat in on a cabinet room meeting. Yeah. No, I understand that, but but I think there are ways of influencing even outside of that sphere, mm -hmm. uh, but that intimate marriage is something that is obviously much more influential. Uh, the president, you guys watch War Games together. We did. Was he scared by that movie? He was, he was touched by that movie, and it bothered him because he was so devoted to ridding the world of nuclear weapons mm -hmm. that the possibility of, of such a thing bothered him. And that was one of the rare movies. Most of the movies in this book, and we go through a lot of them, everything from Top Gun to 9 to 5 to Back to the Future, Close Encounters, mm -hmm. uh, and so forth. We go through all these movies. That was one that I saw affected him more than just being entertained. Yeah. And because it, it kind of scares the bejesus out of you, the thought that, you know, it's something we grapple with today, 
uh, computers becoming so smart that they rule us and, you know, could potentially easily annihilate us. Uh, it's a great portrait of the Reagans, and thank you very much for sharing your My and your pleasure. Stories. Something I was thrilled to do. Oh, thanks, Mark. All right, very good.